I know the easiest drug plans or chemsex plans you can put into place to sort of help yourself get back in control if you're feeling out of control is really simple. It's just like setting a short-term goal and trying to achieve it with some help, with, with some tools. Um, it doesn't need to be uh, going back into your awful past and learning about all the bad things that happened to you or your self-esteem issues or your body image issues or the trauma from the past, figuring out all of that. And you need to fix all of that in order to have control over drug use. That's, a, that's, that's complex stuff that you, deserves, you deserve support with through therapy and at the right time. But usually the first job is park that stuff and just get, get a grip, get control of your drug use, help you to achieve your goals first. And that can be um, a, a lot simpler than you think. It can be just like choosing to have seven days off. Don't think about the rest of your life. Don't think about the rest of your sex life or how drugs are going to fit into it or don't overthink all that stuff. Just think the next seven days. I want to take a break for seven days. It might seem easy. It might seem hard. You might not know. Maybe it's been a while since you tried it. But just giving it a go. Um, it works in three steps. So the first is um, stating that goal. I commit to not doing cams in the next seven days. Stating it loudly and proudly, like writing an email and sending it, taking like... Uh, technological ownership over that goal that you've chosen. Send it to me. Send it to a friend. Send it to yourself. But say that. Don't make that goal real. I choose. I commit to not using drugs in the next seven days. That's my goal. Number one. Now, number two would be you need to have really good reasons for this. If you don't really care about having seven days off, then don't bother. If you have a goal for seven days, uh, only only pursue it if it's important to you. So list the reasons it's important to you. That's the second step. Tell me why this goal is important to you. It's important because I haven't had a weekend off for a long time. It's important because I keep on having paranoia at the end of my sessions and I'm getting tired of that. It might be because I, I'm having so many bad experiences with unkind people. I just I want to take a break or um, I need to put the brakes on and have a month off because I want to focus on my studies. Or I want to have three months off so I can focus on uh, on my new job or whatever. The reasons your seven-day goal is important to you. List them down. That's the step two. And step three is having a, a craving management plan in place because no matter what your goal is for the next seven days, uh, no matter how important it is to you, cravings are going to happen. And cravings are just a part of your brain sending you messages that it thinks that the habit of using is crucially important to your survival, crucially important to your routine, so it doesn't like that you're taking a break. So that's just a, a kind, friendly thing that our brain does to make us keep using, thinking that that's normal and natural for our body cycle. So when a craving happens, you've got to have a craving management plan, which is just one, understanding what it is. But no matter what you what your goal is, no matter how important it is to you, no matter what you talked about in therapy last week or what you talked about with your drugs worker, it really doesn't matter because at that one moment, sometime in the next seven days, it might be a three-minute moment, it might be a one-hour moment, but at some point in the week, you're going to have a craving moment. And nothing you learned in therapy will help you there. And your goal won't help you there. And when you're having a craving, you're thinking of now, 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 me, me, me. You can't reflect on the past and you can't reflect on the consequences of what will happen. What you can think about is what I want now, what I want now. That's how cravings work. That's what our, how our brain sort of encourages to keep on using, continuing that habit. So having an action that you can do in the moment is really important. One is... Um, just knowing that it's happening. So identifying a craving, knowing when it's happening. You know, sometimes when you're just typing, 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 angrily, baby, or um, or watching a, or reading a book and you're not even reading the words, sometimes you can be in an emotional state and not really aware that you're in it until 15 pages later. So identifying, oh, I'm having a craving. That's an art form. That's something we all need to master really, really quickly. So you know, oh, I'm having a craving. I'm not really accessing reality from the past. I'm not really accessing my ability to think forward or problem solve or thinking of consequences. I'm in a craving. I'm um, sort of having irrational thought process and emotions that are overpowering logic and reason. So identifying that and doing something. The first thing we want to do is um, uh, what I practice with, with my uh, colleagues and friends and, and is um, pause, reflect, email. So when you recognize it's happening, it's like pause, Stop. Don't react in the moment. Don't do something. Don't call your dealer. Don't go on to grind it. Don't panic. Don't shh. Just pause. Don't react. Don't do drugs. 
Don't call that shag. Don't respond to that message. Don't, just don't. Pause. Reflect on your goal, your seven-day goal. Reflect on the reasons this seven-day goal was important to you. Do that for a good 30 minutes. Do it for an hour. Do it for three hours. Really reflect. Go back to old emails uh, where you sent maybe to your drugs worker about what your goal has been or what's been important to you. Reflect on the things that you are in your diary in the coming week. And um, then email me or email a friend and say at the end of that 30 minutes and say, if you are going to use, if you have done your pausing and you've reflected for at least 30 minutes or so and you decide I'm going to use, cool. No one should tell you you can't. You have ultimate control over your choices and no one, no drugs worker, no anyone should tell you how to behave or what you should do. If you decide you are going to use, do take ownership for that decision. So email me and say, hi David, I just wanted to let you know that I'm going to use, but it's my choice and it's born out of contemplation and reflection. I'm aware of my goal. I'm cognitively choosing to change it. I'm not just reacting to a craving. I have reflected. I know the consequences and I'm not, not going to complain about them afterwards because I've, I've considered them. I'm taking ownership, cognitive ownership over this choice. I'm not just having a quick impulsive emotional reaction to a craving. I've thought it through. I'm taking cognitive agency ownership over this choice and send that to someone, send it to yourself, send it to me. This act of um, engaging cognitively during that craving moment, the time it takes to open your laptop or your phone and to type the words and to say, I take cognitive ownership over this choice. This is sort of forcing cognitive engagement in your brain during a moment when it's kind of being told to be inactive. So it's, it's an exercise to pause, reflect, and email is something that you can do in that craving moment that protects you from acting impetuously, quickly, emotionally, without thinking or without considering. Because that's awful when we keep making choices in that state. The pause, reflect, email, craving management program can very much about making sure that any choices you do make about altering your seven-day goal are ones that you take agency over, ones that you take cognitive responsibility for, ones that you have reflected on. Now, it, it, it means you're going to be less likely to regret it later, but even if you do regret it later, at least even if you de do keep on using and not achieving a seven-day goal, the fact that you're teaching your brain week after week to engage cognitively in that moment is good training. The same way that you don't learn math overnight or a new language really, really quickly. It takes time and practice. Learning how to manage that craving moment, the decisions we make during a craving, something that takes time and practice. So the practice of pause, reflect, email every time you use teaches you how to, teaches your brain how to have more control, more cognitive control over cravings and within that craving moment. So I hope you've understood that bit. So I'll, I'll go back and summarize now. So if you're trying to take make a break or make some changes in regard to your chemsex, try this three-step program. One is state your goal. I choose, I commit to not using for the next seven days. I commit to it. It's important to me. Two is the reasons it's important to me. List them. I don't care how long or short it is, but give me a reason why your goal is important to you. And if you can't think of a reason why, don't do it. It won't work unless you care. It's crucial in this regard. So I commit to not using for seven days or a month or whatever. The reasons is important to me is this, this, this. And I commit to the pause, reflect, email exercise. Pausing when a craving happens, reflecting on why my goal and why it's important to me, and emailing any change of plan in a very cognitive ownership way. Those three steps, repeated week by week by week by week, are a training program that train you, your brain, to act, think, behave differently during a craving moment helps you to achieve a goal. Because chemsex support is not about, um, doesn't have to be about what someone else says you should be. It doesn't have to be someone telling you how chems should fit into your life or a mum or a sister or a healthcare worker or a doctor telling you to stop. It should always be your choice you're, you have choice to do things that are harmful. You have choice to do things that are pleasurable. You have the choice over all of the things you do. It's very rare that any health person should intervene in that choice. Sometimes we need help making sure that the choice we're making is a cognitive one that we take responsibility for rather than just 
a, a reaction to a craving, a reaction to a highly emotional state that's caused by a history of drug use. So that's it. Pause, reflect, email is, is the third step. A goal, why it's important to you, and a craving management exercise like pause, reflect, email.